Hi everyone, I'm Kat and welcome to my channel, Naturally Beautiful Girl. I am going to be bringing you my empties today. I am extremely overdue in filming this video. The space where I store my empties is just completely overflowing. So we're gonna be doing empties today because I need to film these and then recycle what I can recycle, throw away what needs to be thrown away and clear some space. I'm going to go ahead and just jump right in. The first product, um, I'm actually really impressed that I finished this off. This is my Osea Sea Minerals Mist. I'd originally gotten a sample size of this product in a Pettivore box and then I purchased a full size of this a little over a year ago and I finished it. I did really enjoy it. Um, it is a product from Osea that I definitely recommend, but after using it for almost a year, I just was ready to try out some new um, facial mists. So that's what I'm doing currently. But if you're looking for one, I highly recommend this one, especially if you're not someone that likes uh, floral scents because this is kind of I like to call it kind of the Osea ocean scent, but it's not a floral scent that traditionally a lot of facial mists have. So if you want something a little bit different in terms of scent profile, this one's a good one to check out. And it is cruelty free and vegan as well. This is actually my second one of these that I finished off. And this is the Dr. Bronner's um, Organic Shaving Soap. The scent I have is Tea Tree. I like the convenience of this product because it's something that is sold at my Whole Foods, so I can just go and pick it up in Whole Foods if I need more. After using two of these, I'm really just not impressed by how well they perform. And although they are affordable and something I can easily get my hands on, I would think I would rather just pay a little bit more money and have a shaving product that works better. So I don't think I will be repurchasing one of these in the future because Honestly, the Ursa Major Shaving Cream is a much better shaving cream, and if you want a shaving soap, I definitely would recommend the Coco Lavish um, Whipped Shaving Soap over this one, but I would just pass on this one. I wanted it to work better than it actually worked. This guy, I was very sad when it ran out, and this is the Audacity um, Black Mint Cleanser, and I got this in... I want to say it was the August Pettywear box. I'm pretty sure it was that box because I remember getting this um, product around my birthday time and I really enjoyed using this facial cleanser. It smelled wonderful. It smelled of mint and I just loved using it. It was super cool because it had the charcoal in it and I always felt like it did a really good job of cleansing my face. I really liked it. I would definitely be interested to repurchase this product. I just have a lot of face cleansers in rotation at the minute and I don't want to purchase another face cleanser because there's only one of me and I can only use so much product, but this is definitely something I will keep in mind in the future when I need more of a face cleanser. I recommend this. It wasn't irritating or drying or stripping, but I felt like it did a really good job of getting my face clean. So um, if any of that sounds interesting to you, definitely check this out. Um, this once again is cruelty free and vegan too. I finished off a Takasumi Detox um, deodorant in the scent Sakura Blossom. You guys know that I really love this deodorant. It's really unique in that it doesn't contain baking soda. It just uses um, charcoal as the deodorizing agent. I have another one of these in the scent, the rose scent. I meant to buy another Sakura Blossom scent during the Credo friends and family sale, but I accidentally bought the rose scent. But even though I'm not a huge rose scent person, I just feel like the scent profiles of these deodorants are so good that I even like that rose scent. I would definitely pick up another one of these Kaya Naturals deodorants in the future. I have a couple on hand. They're a product that I highly recommend. So the reason you haven't seen a Desert Essence shampoo in my empties for a while is because I've been working my way through this. This is the Nourishing Shampoo from True Botanicals. And now that this one's finished off, I've been using the Beauty Counter Volume Shampoo. Needless to say, I still love the Desert Essence shampoos. Like if you are looking for like a really good shampoo, I definitely recommend those, especially for the price point. They're really hard to beat. I did like this one, but I think I like the Beauty Counter volume shampoo more. So out of the two, if I were to purchase a more high-end shampoo, I think I would be more inclined to repurchase the Beauty Counter one. I do like the scent of this one. It was a very unique scent that just reminded me of a hair salon. And it did do a good job of cleansing my hair. Out of the three, I would rather purchase either the Desert Essence or the Beauty Counter. I just thought that they worked better for my hair type, which my hair type, by the way, is oily. 
like my skin, my hair is also oily and I have a lot of hair, it's very thick and I use a lot of dry shampoo. So I need something that's like very deep cleaning that's gonna get all that dry shampoo out and really get my hair clean. It sets up well, it did a good job. I guess I'm just saying like, it wasn't bad, it just wasn't my favorite, I've tried. And I'm still using up the conditioner. I do like the conditioner quite a bit, um, just because I have shorter hair and I double cleanse my hair, I end up using more shampoo than conditioner. This is by Plant, and this is the Get Happy Body Wash, and it is the Geranium and Peppermint scent. The curse of being a chemist, I always try and call Geranium, Germanium, and I always try and call Germanium, Geranium. We really needed to come up with different words. They're too close. But anyway, um, I really did like this body wash. It sudsed up very well. I love the scent. I got this in a pettivore box as well. So this is cruelty free and vegan. Um, obviously this is a little travel size. I would definitely be interested in purchasing a full size of this. I just haven't because it's a little bit more expensive and I tend to kind of personally steer towards a more affordable shampoo, conditioner, and um, like showering products because I feel like you just go through them very quickly because you know, they're stuff you use every day. I really just like Plant's mission because they um, make their products with the help of adults with physical and mental disabilities. So I feel like it's a really great brand to be supporting and that they're doing something that's really awesome. I would definitely recommend this. And if you're really looking for a brand that's doing something good in the world, Plant is one I would recommend and they make good products. So definitely something that I want to repurchase in the future. I've got here a Coco Lavish dry shampoo. You guys know that this is my all time favorite dry shampoo. Um, I've got the brunette one because I have brunette hair. Um, this also comes in blonde, so they're both tinted, so they're not just pure white. You guys have heard me speak about this a million times, it absorbs oil well, it's just good. Also, I really just love the Coco Lavish Etsy shop in general. Also, these things last me pretty well. They last me about two months and they cost, I think, around 12-ish dollars, so I feel like the price for how long they last and how well they work is a really, um, it's a really good deal. I don't know how many of these I've gone through. Like I kind of am afraid to think about that. And I'm currently using another bottle right now. So this is from Andalou Naturals and this is their Kukui Cocoa Body Butter. And this is a little sample size that I got in a Petty Bird box. So it's also cruelty free and vegan. I really enjoyed this. It was like a super hydrating um, body butter, but it's like a, it comes in a squeezy tube, obviously. So it's kind of like a very thick lotion, but it absorbed into my skin really well. And it left my skin just feeling very nourished. And I feel like as we're moving into winter, my skin really needs a product like this. And also one of the nice things about Andalou Naturals as well is they are a more affordable brand. They're kind of like drugstore um, non-toxic beauty, which I appreciate because, um, you yeah, know, a lot of these products can be really expensive and it's really great to have high performing products at a good affordable price. So I definitely will be repurchasing this. Um, it smells amazing as well. It had kind of like a coconutty baked good scent. I don't know. I just really liked it. It worked really well and it smelled great. Good if you're looking for a body lotion, but you want something that's a little bit thicker than your traditional body lotion, but still absorbs in and doesn't feel like loopy. I finished off this um, Suntegrity Vanish Organic Cleansing Oil. Once again, this came in a petty pore box, so it's cruelty free and vegan. So this is like a makeup removing oil. Specifically, it's made by Suntegrity, which is a sunscreen brand. And so it's really designed to help you remove your sunscreen. So I did use this quite a bit. I honestly just didn't find it to be any more effective than like my Leilani Pamplemousse. And I like the Leilani Pamplemousse better because it will um, kind of suds up in, in the water. This cleansing oil from Suntegrity is the type of cleansing oil where you have to use a damp washcloth to actually remove it from your face. I didn't find it to be any more effective in removing sunscreen than the Pamplemousse cleanser. So I'd rather just use the pample mousse cleanser. So it was good for what it was. I found a cleanser I like better. This guy, I feel like it took me ages to get through this. This is the Province Apothecary Full Brow Serum. And once again, this came in a petty bird box, so it's cruelty free and vegan. This is like an oil serum that you would rub into your brows. Here's the thing. I have no idea if this helped with my brow growth or not. I have fuller brows now than before I started using this product, but maybe it's just my brows grew naturally. I didn't love it because it added another step to my skincare routine. I mean, I enjoy my skincare routine, but I also don't like having 50 million 
steps. Like I feel like I've kind of maxed out the number of steps I want in my routine. And I just don't know if this one was really worthwhile. Um, I think if you really are struggling with brow growth, this might be a useful product, but I have quite a bit of hair on my head. I have quite a bit of hair on my body. Um, I feel like my brows were inevitably going to grow back because I feel like they were growing back and then I would like over pluck them by accident and then I'd have to wait for them to grow back again. So I don't think I necessarily needed this product, nor am I sure that I was really the best person to test out this product for that reason, because I have quite a bit of brow hair as you can see, like. This is all just using only the Juice Beauty Brow Gel. Like I haven't filled it in with a pencil. It's okay, just not a product I would repurchase. I've got this in a little baggie because this is the KNC Beauty All Natural Retinol Infused Eye Mask. So these are like eye gels that go under your eyes. They, they had this shape, so they were kind of like a little shooting star and they were cool because they were clear and glittery. Um, I picked these up at Cat Beauty when I was in New York for my birthday. I also picked up their lip mask, which I haven't tried yet. And I like this a lot. It was really nice. I enjoy using a gel mask under my eyes. I think it really helps with deep puffing. If I wake up in the morning, my eyes just feel particularly puffy. I will go in with a eye gel like this, but honestly, I found it to be more or less the same as using like the Honest Hazel eye gels. So if you want something that's like glittery and really cute and really fun, I think this is great, but I feel like the Honest Hazel eye gels were just as comparable as this one. So this product is from Goldfade MD, and this is their Bright Eyes like Eye Serum. And I got this in a Petty Board box as well. I feel like most of my empties this time are from Petty Board. So it's once again, cruelty free and vegan. If you're watching my Petty Board videos, you've heard me talk about it for a while that I did not like the pump on this product because it would just dis dispense way too much eye cream. Um, so basically it would dispense more than I could use under both of my eyes. And I felt like it was really wasteful because of that. But I am interested in picking up the full size of this product because I really did like how it absorbed on, into my skin. It was very nourishing, but I felt like it wasn't heavy under my eyes. And I was particularly like a product like that for in the morning where I once upon an eye cream, but I know that I'm going to go in with concealer on top and having something that just absorbs and it really is not at all greasy or heavy under the eyes is really great for going in with makeup application. So I would like to get a full size of this. I've said this many times, but I have a really hard time determining if any sort of eye serum or eye cream actually has an effect on my eyes like I don't really notice a difference but I like putting it on there because I feel like it's important preventative skincare and I'm hoping that doing that now in my 20s will pay off later in life so that's kind of how I see it but um, in terms of consistency this is definitely one of my favorite eye products that I've used and I'm sorry if you can hear some noise outside I'm not entirely sure it sounds like they're leaf blowing or something outside it just started, but um, I only have a few more products to do, so I'm gonna just try and wrap this up. So I apologize for the noise if you can hear it. This is the final skincare product I have, and this is from Herbivore Botanicals, and, the, and this is their Lapis Oil. I got a set from Sephora that had the Lapis Oil and the Blue Tansy um, Exfoliating Face Mask, and they were like little sample sizes of both. I did end up using up the space oil, but I'm still using the face mask. When I first tried it out, I didn't love it. I just thought it was like, okay. And then I tried it again and I stopped using it, went back to like my Le Leilani champagne serum. And then I decided, okay, Kat, you need to just like finish up this face oil. Cause it was just kind of like knocking around. It was half empty. So I decided to just like power through and finish it off. And I feel like the second time around, I liked it better than the first time, but I still don't think it's necessarily worth the price. The full size of this product is really expensive. And I honestly feel like there are other serums on the market, like the Leilani Champagne Serum, that are comparable in terms of effect, but more affordable. So it's not a bad product. And if you know, for instance, your skin really likes blue tansy and responds well to it, this might be a good option, but also the Graydon Skincare, their new uh, Full Moon Serum also has blue tansy in it. And out of the two, I mean, they're different. This one from Herbivore is more oily and the one from Graydon is more of a water-based. But if I had to pick out of the two, I would hands down pick the Graydon Skincare Full Moon Serum in terms of having a blue tansy serum product, just as reference. But it's okay, it works you know, decently well. It hydrated my skin, wasn't irritating or anything like that, but I do think it is quite expensive for what it is. I also finished up a lip balm from Potion. This is a smaller brand. They have an Etsy shop. They also have an online retailer. They are relatively local to me. So I actually picked this up at a local flea market. It was okay, but I 
hands down prefer the Osmia Lip Doctor. It just works so much better. So it was fine, just nothing too exciting. These are two mascaras that aren't fully empty, but I've had them for too long and I need to dispose of them. This one is the um, Pacifica Dream Big Mascara. This is the one that has the wand that you can retract or um, extend the wand to create different effects with your eyelashes. I honestly just didn't think this did very much. Um, there are a lot of other mascaras I would recommend over this one. Root 100% Lash Mascara, the Well People Expressionist Mascara, the Honest Beauty Mascara, all those I would recommend way over this one. It's just not worth it. And those are very similar in price point to this one. So just not my favorite mascara. This is the original Ilia mascara. They came out with a newer one. This is not the newer one. This is the like original one. I did not like this at all. I felt like it like basically just tinted my eyelashes. It really didn't do anything to lengthen my eyelashes. Just not a good product. Um, so definitely would pass on the old version of the mascara. I've heard good things about the new version, but I have not tried it but the old version is definitely not worthwhile. I'm a little bit surprised to say this, but I did go through the Fit Glue um, Beauty Concealer. I know you can see some in here, but that is literally just product stuck to the side. Um, and believe it or not, I repurchased another one and I'm working my way through another one. I do have the shade C1, which is the lightest shade. And I finally figured out how to use this. I liked blending it out with a damp sponge and then baking it with the 14E setting powder. That combination works really well. And one of the things I've really come to like about this is it's full, pretty full coverage. And the shade in C1 is actually light enough to brighten under my eyes. Most concealers that I've used really just match my skin tone, but aren't really brightening. And this one's actually brightening. So if you're really fair and you're having a difficult time finding a concealer that's brightening, I would recommend this one, but you definitely need the damp sponge technique to get this blended out. It's very thick and difficult to blend otherwise. And if you have oily skin, you need to bake it with something like the 14E setting powder, otherwise it will crease on you. I know that Ficlo says that this is creaseless, but for me, it is completely not creaseless. It definitely does crease quite a bit on me if I don't bake it, but I've liked it enough to repurchase another one. All right, and my final product I'm going to talk about is my Ilia True Skin Serum Foundation. And I completely used this up. Like I said, there's a little bit of product stuck on the side, but I've been scraping it out and it is empty. I repurchased another one, picked it up during the Credo Friends and Family sale. And this one is just a great year round foundation for me. But if you've not tried this foundation out, I recommend it so, so, so much. It is so good. It's rare that you actually go through an entire foundation bottle and I've actually made it through an entire one of these. So we'll just put that out there. I hope you enjoyed seeing my empties video and hearing about the products that I used up during the month. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to my channel for more non-toxic beauty content. And also check out my Instagram. I'll have my handle down below. I'm at naturally beautiful girl. And once again, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.